Okay, this PowerPoint is biological factors affecting development, genotype and maturation. I think it's maturation or maturation. Um, and disease, illness, and disability. So the learning outcomes of this PowerPoint is, I guess, must knows the effect on pies. I don't even know what pies is, but it must be in there somewhere. But I don't know that genotype and maturation, um, actually maturation, to call it, disease and illness and disability can have. Next point should be able to uh, apply this knowledge to answer exam based questions. Third, could be able to explain how social and biological factors can interact to affect a child's development. Okay, now let's begin with biological factors. Children enter the world with an built in system of function. They are primed to a, a certain extent due to their genetic makeup or genotype. Illness, disease, and disability all influence children's development. So, genotype and maturation. First point is your genotype refers to the inherited characteristics, those things that make us biologically who we are. So, genotype is your genes. So, imagine your genes which passed on from your father and mother to make you. So, maturation refers to the sequence of growth that is determined by our genes. We can only learn skills when we are maturationally ready. Children pass through the same stage of maturation in the same order. So maturing, the word mature. As we grow older, we mature. So that is basically determined by our genes. And that's not the genes you wear. That's the genes you're given by your mum and dad. Okay, now physical development. A child's physical development is greatly influenced by their genotype and maturation. Both determine when a child may master certain skills such as potty training. In potty training, it may take time for the central nervous system to develop and recognize the impulses from nerves in the bladder. The child can't respond yet. So just think of when you need to go to the toilet, you know, signal is sent to your brain to tell you I need to go to the toilet. So as you get older, you know, you start learning, you know, these signals. That's when you can hold it and not go in, you know, that's why they wear diapers. <coughs> okay, um, intellectual development. How much of a child's cognitive ability is inherited? The research is conflicting. The brain develops in response to stimulation, thus troubles in weight in the first year of life. Both children born to intelligent parents are often also intelligent, inherited or better, more encouraging environment. So what do you think? You know, I think it's quite conflicting. You don't really know. Some, some students might have dumb parents, but they can still, you know, and they're, they're very intelligent. I think the broad perspective, broadly speaking, if your parents are smart, you're going to be smart. Social and uh, emotional development. How much of your personalities are the result of inherited factors or environmental experience? There are parts of the brain that are responsible for recognizing emotions and our hormones and chemicals responsible for us to make you feel happy, angry, depressed, etc. <clears throat> okay, now to the next point. Disease and illness. Disease and illness can affect children's development in several ways depending on the severity and duration. Long-term absence from school or frequent bouts of hearing loss can make a long-lasting difference. So how does disease and illness affect physical development? Medical conditions can restrict physical activity, asthma, sickle cell diseases, etc. and thus affect gross motor development. 
Children undergoing treatment for disease may lack the energy required to take part in physical experience. <coughs> so how does disease and illness affect intellectual development? Unwell children lack concentration and drugs for conditions can cause drowsiness. Repeated school absence can slow learning through some schooling can help. Children with hearing impairment or learning difficulties may be slower to learn languages. <coughs> so again, disease and illnesses affect with emotional and social development. Ill children can miss out on relationships. They may not be able to mix with other kids due to the risk of infection or may find it difficult if they are frequently the infrequently there. Chronic sufferers may have overprotective adults and they miss out becoming independent and it affects their self-esteem. Self-esteem can be low as they see themselves as being different and cannot do the same activities as other children. So now moving on to another topic, disability. So disability is when some children may have a disability as a result of an accident, birth trauma or chromosomal abnormalities. The extent to which a disability affects them will be determined by the support from their parents, teachers and early year staff. There are many diseases and disabilities but we have to look at them next lesson. Obviously not next lesson, but you know. Now moving on, how does disability affect physical development? Children may be overprotected and not developed self skills. <coughs> uh, some disabilities make moving difficult and thus affect proper physical development. Specialist equipment can be employed to overcome these problems. For example, a standing frame to support a child who needs more strength in their legs. So if you remember a movie called Forrest Gump, um, I guess you guys haven't, but Forrest Gump, he had some brackets on his legs, then he ran, they supported his legs. Or a wheelchair, he can't walk, or some type of Zimmer frame, he can't walk. So now, how does disability affect intellectual development? Some disabilities affect the ability to learn, concentrate or use language, example Down syndrome and autism. <clears throat> Other children may find that low expectations and stereotyping means they are not giving enough opportunities and challenges. So now how does disability affect social and emotional development? Discrimination is a major factor for children with disabilities. Access to the same education is a problem, but there is new legislation to combat this. It also means it is harder to make them, harder for them to make friends and be accepted. Bullying can greatly reduce confidence and self-esteem. Self-esteem may be low from feeling different to other children. Some disabilities affect the ability to make friendships. Um, autistics can find it difficult to imagine others' needs and feelings. So these are some exam, typical exam questions. Identify two factors that can affect a child's language development and outline how each may have an effect. Actually, I don't think I'm going to bother. I'll just go through the exam questions. I'm not going to read them all out. You can see them for yourself there. So these three are typical exam questions, try to answer them, answer what they're 